So the, the fourth priority that our churches um, align themselves around is this idea of gaining, training and retaining volunteers. You know, we say we need to make effort to connect people through serving. Because if you came to my church, Rachel, you would always say, I like this about your church. I enjoyed coming to your church. But if you started to serve in the car park or you started to serve in kids ministry or you started to serve in the band or something like that or hosting, then you change your language from your church to our church. You know, you'd weigh in and with your gifts and it would mean that you would then buy in with your allegiance and your your money and your time and you get your feet lined up behind the mission. So we connect people through serving. So we have to find a way to gain new volunteers. And the best thing I've, you know, honestly, I, this drives me mad in church life. Oftentimes when I was a leader in, in the Forge Community Church, um, people would come up to me and say, oh, we need some volunteers. Can you announce it from the stage? And I would say to them, do you know what? That's not, I'm happy to do it, but it's not going to work. It never has worked. Me standing on the stage saying, oh, by the way, they're a bit short in kids' church. Anybody want to volunteer? People think, oh, wow, I'm just going to be lumbered. They're understaffed. It's a sinking ship. And I don't want to be involved in that. You know, asking from the stage doesn't happen. The best thing is if you, if I came up to you, Rachel, and say, Rach, I think you could do what I do. I think you've got it in you to make a difference to the next generation. Would you come with me and do a little taste and see? I'm not asking you to sign up. I'm asking you to just come for a week or two weeks. Watch what we do, because I think you could do it. I think you could do it better than me. So just come and have a taste and see. And and I think you would lean into that. So it it, it takes an ask, not a notice in a notice sheet or a round robin email or a notice from the stage. And then train people. Once I've got you on board, you know, you're going to be worried about uh, how do you do this? How do you do that? Properly train people. My wife's a nurse, and when she was, she trained at Great Ormond Street. She's a um, highly specialised um, intensive care baby nurse at the moment. She works on um, intensive care baby unit. Um, and she, there was a when she was a younger nurse, she went on a. She was often called to uh, midwifery services because a baby was born and it wasn't breathing, and it would be panic stations. And she hated those calls. Now those calls are her favourite calls. When when the buzzer goes off. She puts on her full PPE now. She runs down the corridor. She pushes all the doctors, the junior doctors, everyone out of the way. They all look for Debbie. And she comes around and she knows how to make a baby who isn't breathing start breathing again. She loves it. And when you say to her, so what was the difference? What took you from being a panicked nurse to being a nurse who loves it? And she would say one word, training. I went on a course. They taught me how to do it. You know, so I think we need to gain volunteers by asking them to come and have a taste and see, not sign up for life. We need to train them to do the job we're asking them to do. And then we need to retain them. And that might mean annually saying, do you feel under challenged or over challenged with this or about right? Do you want to carry on? Do you not want to carry on? And in between those times, I think we need to value them, to, to, to thank them regularly, to thank them publicly, to thank them personally. Again, I was preaching in a church a few years back. Uh, quite a few years back because my, my youngest was you know a baby in creche and I took him down to creche before I was speaking and left him with the people down there it was lovely really nice lovely lady down there and then um, at the end of the, the service I came to pick him up again and I just I held the woman's hand and I just said listen thank you thank you for what you've done for my son he's obviously loved it and enjoyed it but more than that thank you for what you're doing in the life of the church because the adults wouldn't be able to do what they do if you didn't feed into the kids like this and she started to cry and I, and I said, everything OK? She said, oh, no. She said, I've been, I've been doing this for nine years and no one has ever said thank you to me. No one ever. It doesn't cost anything, you know. And then why don't you start putting some lines in budget for volunteer appreciation? You know, an Amazon voucher, a, a, a Costa Coffee card, a, anything just to say thank you to people. You know, even on Zoom right now, why, you know, why don't you, for all your kids' volunteers or any volunteer... Buy them a £15 Just Eats voucher and say, we're going to eat Chinese together tomorrow night. And here's a voucher. You buy it, you get it delivered. I'll get it delivered. We'll eat food together and we'll talk. They'll feel so valued because of that. So gain, train and retain your volunteers so that people start connecting to your church through using their gifts to serve. So the whole model, if you like, right from an engaging environment to an engage or an irresistible environment to an engaging presentation to pr- prioritizing your kids and youth to gaining training and retaining your volunteers the whole model 
is is aimed at funneled down towards this final one 